Dr. Dyer, thanks so much for joining us here on Health Connection. Our topic, heart disease, the genetics behind it. Let's Starting off that. with our first question, how common are heart diseases that are inherited, such as heart muscle diseases like uh, cardiomyopathies or other diseases like heart rhythm disorders, things like that? Well, uh, the, the range is pretty wide. It can be as common as one in every 500 and can go up to one every 10,000 or 100,000. And it varies depending on the particular disorder one is uh, interested to look at. And the, it is different for disorders of the heart muscle and different for disorders of conduction, which is actually the heart rhythm problems. If a parent has died from an inherited uh, heart disease, a heart disorder, what should the children do to determine their risk for having the same problem and are there warning signs? Sure. It, uh, it is, uh, once again, uh, uh, a set of information tools that the cardiologist will utilize in, in order to determine that risk. If the parent has died suddenly because of an inherited heart muscle condition versus related to a heart attack, then the way we assess will be different. And the recommendation will, uh, will be determined by the condition from which the cardiologist determines the parent died from. For, so, for example, if you say a heart attack, which is you know, tied to plaque buildup, are the children at greater risk of dying from the same cause? That is, uh, once again, it is determined by what actually brought on the heart attack in the, in, in the parent. Okay. What we consider as premature heart attack in a in a particular patient is if, say, my father had a heart attack at an age less than 50 years, or if my mother had a heart attack less than 55 years, then we consider that the child is at a higher risk of developing heart attack in the future. Are there any warning signs that the child can look for? Sure. It is uh, predominantly determined by what kind of risk factors or what kind of uh, other medical conditions that the, that the person has. If the patient has high, high blood pressure, diabetes, or is a, is a smoker, then that elevates the risk and you can say that a uh, person is at a higher risk. In terms of warning symptoms, if someone develops chest pain or shortness of breath, all coming on with activity and relieved with rest, then that would be a warning sign for them to get it checked out. You touched on this, but let's go a little further. If a parent had heart disease at a younger age, are there children at greater risk for developing heart disease? Sure, it certainly is the case. And like I said, it is determined by at what age the parent actually developed the heart condition. Is if the patient had, uh, if the parent had a heart attack at a young age, which we determine as male less than 50 and in a female less than 55, then the offspring is at a higher risk. And also certain inherited or genetic conditions of high cholesterol that a patient can develop can further elevate the risk. So this is the question that, that kids might ask. If one or both parents have had a heart attack, does that pretty much guarantee that the children are more likely to have a heart attack too? Well, it is not as straightforward as that because anything related to heart attack and uh, conditions similar to that, when we talk about inheritance, it is what we call as the predisposition based on your genetic makeup, combined with behavioral and environmental factors which have to come together in order to trigger a heart attack. And that's where the complexity arises. If both parents have had a heart attack, you're at a higher risk than someone who's not had it. And on top of that, if you add environmental factors such as smoking and if the patient develops high blood pressure and diabetes you certainly elevate the risk. If both parents have inherited heart disease who's more likely to pass it on mom or dad? Well, there's no uh, one particular uh, parent passing on the uh, passing on the risk it's usually uh, combined and it is not specific to either the uh, father or the mother and those conditions when it's inherited from the mother is there much more rare conditions probably in the order of one in every hundred thousand or so and those are extremely rare uh, rare circumstances is genetic testing for heart disease effective in identifying future problems yes and no and in certain conditions what 
the most common reason for a uh, heart attack is what is called as a polymorphic disorder wherein there are multiple gene problems that can occur in order to increase the risk. In such situation, the, uh, just doing a genetic test may not be helpful. Whereas, if there is a heart muscle problem or a conduction problem where the heart, the heart is more prone to irregular heart rhythm, then doing a genetic test will definitely allow one to determine the risk of the, uh, risk of the offspring. How is genetic testing for heart disease done? It is first based on a consultation with a cardiologist who would determine the risk and if he thinks that the condition would be meaningful by proceeding with genetic testing, then we take a blood sample, send it off to specialized labs which will help us give, us, uh, give information. You may have answered this. When should someone consider genetic testing? Uh, I, I would suggest uh, that if the cardiologist determines that this is an unusual condition and uh, if it has particularly occurred at a very young age and if the patient's parents have had heart conditions related to the heart muscle or a heart attack also at a young age, then genetic testing may prove to be very useful. If heart disease runs in the family, are there some specific steps one can take to avoid it? Sure. Here I would say the number one killer uh, in the U.S. is uh, related to heart disease and heart attacks. And in that uh, arena, the main advice that I would give for someone to prevent a heart attack would be significant lifestyle changes. And in case they have family history of early heart attacks, then see a cardiologist for further evaluation to manage those risks in order to decrease it over time. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.